Hey guys, struggling to connect marketing theory with practice? In Sam Rush Academy's new marketing analysis course, we cover marketing basics and an actionable flow to build your own data-driven strategy. This video provides a glimpse into the course content, focusing on market analysis, market size, and market share. And while you're here, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss any new videos like this one because this course is all about putting marketing theory into practice, we are offering every student free access to SEMrush.trends, so you can collect real market data and develop a strategy to bring forward with you. If you are interested in growing your marketing know-how and data analysis skills, check out the course by following the Academy page link in the description. Let's dig in. Now, let's start with Tam, Sam, and so on. To build a viable strategy, we need to analyze our entire total addressable market, also known as TAM. This concept of TAM entails your target market, that is, all the interest that exists between your market for product and services you offer, or products and services similar to the ones you offer. This number includes demand from those who need an offered product or service even if they're not willing, ready, or able to make a purchase. This helps to assess the growth potential of a business. Then, there is the serviceable available market, better known as SAM. This is the portion of the audience that we aim to reach. Because this audience fits our business model and our targets, we can realistically cater to their needs. We can think of this as the amount of demand within the total addressable market from individuals who are ready and able to purchase an offered product or service. Finally, SOM stands for Serviceable Obtainable Market. It's the audience that we can definitely reach or are already working with. But when thinking about our market potential, we have to focus on the first two concepts, TAM and SAM. Next. It's important to understand our market share. With enough of the right data on hand, you can calculate it yourself. The classic formula for market share considers your company's total sales and identifies what percentage they make up of the total market sales. A lot of public sources have info on total sales by industry. Think Statista, Nielsen reports, and so on. You can also calculate market share by the number of customers total customers within the industry versus your own volumes. If these two aren't applicable, you can also benchmark yourself against the key industry players, be it in terms of sales volumes or customers. This one's harder to do, but if you are comparing yourself with companies that are public, they release a lot of data that the public you can use to crunch the numbers. But things get a little more complicated when it comes to online markets your share of active users, traffic, and other online interactions are also important to measure. Let's look at few strategies for assessing your digital market share. Initially, you have to understand that market share itself is just a number. To turn this number into an action plan, you must find ways to analyze and apply it. Here are a few necessary aspects of a solid analysis. First, define your target. Market share is usually calculated by country. Narrowing down your target market will help you find out where your potential customers live and compare regions. Then, always compare yourself against similar businesses. While you may be an e-commerce, if you're a local arts and craft e-shops, it might be misleading to look at Amazon as your key competitor. Select companies of similar size that share your audience demographics to better gauge your market share and actually understand what that number means. And since we've already mentioned competitors, you also have to unwrap your rival's market share. In one market, a 10% market share can imply market leadership. In others, it just means average performance. To be able to evaluate business, you need benchmarks. And market share is no different. And last but not least, always be on the lookout for gaps and opportunities. How? 
Well, analyzing the strategies of other market players is a great place to start. This can help you capitalize on the tactic market leaders are using. For instance, if you spot a dramatic increase in traffic, try to reveal where that growth comes from. Is it organic growth? That means they invest in SEO. Is it coming from paid campaigns? Or maybe they just started getting active on social media? Research, explore, and find opportunities for your own growth based on competitors' best practices. This part might seem a bit abstract, but I'll show you how to do it all hands-on. Let's try calculating the online market share of Netflix. We'll take Netflix.com as an example and select the USA as the region. For this domain, the entire addressable market, TAM, is 7 billion users. Sembra's trends measure this based on traffic stats from 41 relevant market players. This is the number of all users who use streaming services, including those who do not use Netflix itself. The small circle, SAM, is the audience that might be interested in visiting the Netflix.com domain, in particular, and it's 2.2 billion people. By looking at these numbers individually, comparing them with each other, and examining them across different months, we can shape our strategy when launching new products or developing marketing strategies. On the left side, you see a quick overview of the level of competition within the market Netflix is in, as well as the key players and the digital market share they hold. Now, let's look at Netflix competitive landscape. I'll be using the very same the .trends platform for this overview. Once we've correctly identified our market and our share on it, it's only logical to start looking around to explore who else has captured a significant portion of the market and analyze the competitive landscape. This is how we identify our main competitors. The Market Explorer tool features a growth quadrant, a widget that offers a visual layout of the entire competitive environment. Rolling back to Netflix, this is how we interpret this visual. The growth quadrant has four segments that reflect the position of each competitor within the market. In the online realm, it's traffic that we should be looking at. The total volume as well as growth, the client dynamics. Here is an example of the growth quadrant for Netflix and three competitors. In the growth quadrant, competitors are divided into four segments, which indicate the position of companies in the market. The growth rate, in this case, directly depends on the traffic, its growth, and the total volume. Niche players, in this case, Amazon Prime, are brands that have a comparatively low traffic volume, and their growth rate is fairly low compared to the overall market. Game changers are companies that also have low traffic volumes but a higher growth rate than the market average. Startups, large companies entering new markets, or companies doing magic with their marketing usually fall into this category. In this case, Disney takes the prize. Leaders are businesses with significant traffic and a high growth pace. In the streaming services market, Hulu is in the leader's position. Established players are companies with a significant traffic share. They take over a large part of the market, but their growth rates aren't that high relative to the market overall. Established brands with a recognizable name make up most of this category. Netflix, as we see, is an established market player. Now that you had a taste of the marketing analysis, it's time to enroll in the full academy course. With 10 short lessons and a variety of marketing-related topics and full access to get real data in SEMrush.trends, you'll discover everything you need to develop a winning strategy. And as you work through the course, each lesson includes challenges and top additional resources to get deeper. Enroll now for free and we'll see you there.